Welcome to the CISSP Cyber Training Podcast, where we provide you the training and tools you need to pass the CISSP exam the first time. Hi, my name is Sean Gerber, and I'm your host for this action-packed, informative podcast. Join me each week as I provide the information you need to pass the CISSP exam and grow your cybersecurity knowledge. All right, let's get started. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, all, Sean Gerber with CISSP Cyber Training, and today we're going to be having some various CISSP questions for you to help you pass the CISSP exam. So before we get started, you want to go to CISSPCybertraining.com and you can get access to all of these CISSP questions. All you have to do is just sign up for my email list and you can get access to 30 free CISSP questions every single month. And if you like that, you can try before you buy. If you like that, then you can get access by purchasing my membership or one of the other programs we have, and you can get access to all of my CISSP questions. And it's awesome. It really is. There's my recorded content. You name it, you can get it through CISSPCybertraining.com. Okay, so let's talk, start talking about CISSP questions, and let's get on with question number one. We're going to be focused on domain six. And of this domain six, you can actually also see these at uh, my podcast, the CCT061. You can get these videos on YouTube and you can get them through CISSPCybertraining.com. Okay, which of the following is a primary objective of security assessments and testing? A, ensuring compliance of legal regulations. Two, identifying vulnerabilities and weaknesses. C, actually it should have been two, it should have been B. C, establish incident response procedures, and D, developing security policies and procedures. Okay, so which of the following primary objectives of secure of a security assessment and of testing? A, ensuring compliance with legal regulations. B, identifying vulnerabilities and weaknesses. C, establishing incident response procedures. Or D, developing security policies and procedures. And well, when you're dealing with security assessments and the testing, the ultimate goal is to get your vulnerabilities and find your weaknesses. So therefore, the answer would be B. Each of those other areas, compliance, incident response, and security policies are beneficial uh, for a security assessment program, but they're not the primary objective for them. What is the purpose of validation strategies in security assessments and testing? So again, what is the purpose of validation strategies in security assessments and in testing? A, to ensure compliance with regulatory requirements. B, to assess the effectiveness of the security controls. C, to evaluate the accuracy of the test results. Or D, to define the scope of the testing activities. Okay, the purpose of the validation strategies, basically you're validating the security assessment and its test, is B, to assess the effectiveness of the security controls. Again, that's designed to basically identify unknown vulnerabilities by simulating real-world attacks. And so if you want to basically validate that, you need to determine if it was effective or not. Okay, which assessment methodology is best suited for identifying known vulnerabilities in a system? Again, the question is, which assessment methodology is best suited to identify unknown vulnerabilities within a system? A, vulnerability scanning. B, penetration scanning. C, security auditing. Or D, risk assessments. Okay, so which assessment methodology is best suited for identifying unknown vulnerabilities? And the answer would be penetration testing. Again, it's specifically designed to identify unknown vulnerabilities by simulating real-world attacks. Question four. What is the essential consideration when creating test data for security assessments? So again, what is the essential consideration when creating realistic test data for security assessments? A, including live production data. B, using sensitive customer information. C, maintaining data confidentiality or D, avoiding anonymization techniques. Okay, so what is the essential consideration when creating realistic test data for security assessments? So you're wanting to make sure that you create this realistic test data, but what is the purpose behind it, or main consideration that you want to do it? When you're adding this, this data, this test data to it, 
Um, you're, so you're grabbing data and you're putting it in there to basically run and see if it works. What is the main consideration you need to keep in mind? And that would be C, maintaining data confidentiality. Okay, so you got using sensitive customer information. That would be in the central consideration. You wouldn't want to do that. Um, you also, including live production data, may not want to do that either. And then avoiding anonymization techniques. You, you want to anonymize the data, right? So if you're going to be testing, so you wouldn't want that either. The main part was you're dealing with is data confidentiality. That is a bigger, broader brush than just using sensitive, than mentioning sensitive customer data. So that it's a kind of a tricky one because you may bite off on the sensitive customer information, but the real answer is maintaining data confidentiality. Question five, which of the following is a critical step in the audit process for security assessments and testing? A, identifying vulnerabilities, B, conducting penetration testing, C, engaging external auditors, or D, implementing remediation measures. Again, which of the following is a critical step in the audit process for security assessment and testing? A, identify weaknesses, B, conduct penetration testing, C, engage external auditors, and D, is implement remediation measures. So again, the question coming down to is a critical step in the audit process that would be engaging external auditors. So usually having an external auditor and you're dealing with auditing is an important factor. You can do that for internal, but you would want a third party or a third group to do that internally for yourselves. Question six, what is the primary purpose of continuous improvement in security assessment and testing? A, identifying vulnerabilities and weaknesses. B, ensuring compliance with legal regulations. C, enhancing the effectiveness of assessment processes. Or D, developing security policies and procedures. Okay, again, the question, was the primary purpose of continuous improvement in security assessment and testing? A, identifying vulnerabilities and weaknesses. B, compliance and regulations. C, enhancing the effectiveness of assessment processes. Or D, developing security policies and procedures. The primary purpose of continuous improvement is C, enhancing the effectiveness of assessment processes. Again, continuous improvement aims to enhance the effectiveness of your security assessment and testing over time. Question seven, what is a common validation objective in security assessment testing? A, compliance with legal regulations. B, accuracy of assessment documentation. C, alignment of industry standards, or D, development of risk plans, risk mitigation plans. Again, what is a common validation objective in security assessment and testing? And the answer would be compliance with legal regulations. The, the per, one of the main purposes of a security assessment and the testing that goes with it is to help you come in line with compliance around legal regulations that might be out there. You, there depending on the industry you're in, you may have to have various audits or assessments done to ensure that you will comply with those legal regulations. Uh, one would be data security law with China. There would be ones with, uh, in the United States, is your PCI DSS. All of those fall within that environment. Question eight, which audit strategy develops an unbiased evaluation of an organization's security posture? A, internal audits. B, external audits. Three, uh, three, C, third-party audits, or D, compliance audits. Again, which is an unbiased evaluation of the organization's security posture? And the answer would be C, third-party audits. They do typically provide an unbiased evaluation of your organization's security structure. An external audit might be somebody you actually work with. You Maybe you know them. Uh, that would be a situation where that might not be as, as unbiased as you possibly might like. Okay, question nine. Well, before we get into question nine, just want to again put out a plug for CISSP Cyber Training. Go check it out. You can also go to freeciSSPquestions.com and you can get access to my 30 free CISSP questions every single month for the next year. I mean, you'll get them 360 questions to help you. That's 30 free CISSP questions at freeciSSPquestions.com. Question nine, which of the following examples of an external audit in security assessments and testing? A, self-assessment of internal auditors. B, review the security policies by management. C, an assessment conducted by an independent consulting firm. Or D, evaluation of control effectiveness by the IT department. So which of the following is an example of an external audit in security assessment 
and testing. So again, external audit. And the answer is C, an assessment conducted by an independent consulting firm. If you look at the rest of the questions, you got to deal with internal auditors, you got management, and you have the IT department. That is an, not typically an external audit. An independent consulting firm would be an external audit. Question 10, what is a recommendation approach, a recommended approach for addressing identified vulnerabilities in security assessments? So you have a security assessment, you find some vulnerabilities, how should you address those? A, ignore low severity vulnerabilities. B, prioritize vulnerabilities based on severity. Conduct an additional assessment for confirmation. Or D, focus solely on technical controls. Now, if you watch, read through these, you'll, they'll make kind of sense, right? So you, you definitely want to deal with severity, and but ignoring anything is usually not good. I mean, there might be a time you might do that, but it typically isn't something you would do. Um, you really don't need to, once you've just conducted an assessment, you don't need to do another one unless you really want to just spend money. So the answer would be B, prioritizing violent vulnerabilities based on severity. So again, that's the recommended approach for identifying vulnerabilities in security assessments is to prioritize them based on the severity and then address them as needed. Question 11, which aspect of a security assessment and testing should be continuously updated to reflect emerging threats? A, test plans and procedures. B, regulatory compliance requirements. C, security control documentation. Or D, audit reporting templates. So again, which aspect of the security assessment and the test should continuously be updated to reflect emerging threats? When you're basically testing your plans and procedures, that's the threats will change, right? From ransomware to a worm that may roll in to different, you may have a stray backhoe that hits out, takes out your network. Those are different. So you may have different test plans and procedures and you may modify those to meet these emerging threats. Next question, what is the purpose purpose? What is the purpose of a performance evaluation in security assessments and testing? A, assess the effectiveness of the controls. B, monitor the progress of the remediation activities. C, evaluate the competence of the individuals, individuals involved in the assessment. Or D, validating compliance with regulatory requirements. So again, what is the purpose of performance evaluations? Again, you're doing a review of the person in a security assessment and testing. You, the purpose of that is that you are evaluating their competence in what they're doing. So it would be answer would be C. So that's the, the ultimate goal is that you are trying to figure out, are they the person that will actually understand what they're doing and are they capable of doing it? Question 13, which of the following is used to validate effectiveness controls during a security assessment testing? Question, what is the question? What is the method is used to validate the effectiveness of controls during security assessments and testing? A, penetration testing. B, risk assessments. C, security auditing. Or D, vulnerability scanning. Scan which method is used to validate the effectiveness of controls during a security assessment and testing? The answer, or the answer is C, security auditing, right? Security auditing is a way to evaluate the effectiveness of the controls during a security assessment and a test. Question 14, how can collaboration and knowledge sharing contribute to continuous improvement in security assessments and tests? A, facilitating the exchange of ideas and experiences. B, reducing the need for external audits. C, streamlining the assessment process. Or D, minimizing the need for remediation efforts. So the question is again, how can collaboration and knowledge sharing contribute to continuous improvement in security assessments and testing? The answer is A, facilitating the exchange of ideas and experiences. That is basically how when you share ideas, you get better ideas on how to deal with things. I was, as an example, I met with some people in our local community and started sharing some ideas on ransomware and how it may affect the community. And they are taking that advice and they're moving on with it. So there, there's different ways by sharing information can really go a long ways in protecting facilities uh, or protecting anybody in general. All right, question 15, the last question, the last melon. Which of the following is a key benefit for, of external audits in security assessments and testing? So again, what is a key benefit of an external audit in security assessments and testing? A, assurance of regulatory compliance. compliance. B, identification of all vulnerabilities. C, cost-effective assessment procedures. Or D, objectivity and impartiality. 
Again, what is the question is, which of the following is a key benefit of an external audit in security assessments and testing? A, insurance regulations, assurance of regulatory compliance. B, identification of all vulnerabilities. C, cost-effective assessment processes. Or D, objectivity and impartiality. And the answer would be D, objectivity and impartiality are one of the key benefits of having an external audit. Okay, I hope you all like this. This was, there was 15 questions of the CISSP. Go out to CISSPCybertraining.com and you can get some more. Sign up for at free CISSPQuestions.com and you can get a plethora of CISSP questions to help you study for the exam. Again, the ultimate goal is to help you pass this doggone exam. We want you to get through it. We want you to do well and we want you to move on with your cybersecurity career. All right, have a great day and we'll catch you on the flip side. See ya. Hey, thanks again for listening today. It's been my pleasure to prep you for the CISSP exam. Are you interested, though, in some free CISSP exam questions? Head on over to freecisspquestions.com and sign up to join my email list, and you'll receive access for 60 free CISSP questions each and every month for the next six months. That's a total of 360 questions just for signing up with CISSP Cyber Training. You'll also gain access to other free CISSP resources, so just head on over to freeCISSPQuestions.com and sign up, or head on over to CISSPCybertraining.com and sign up today. Have a wonderful day, and we will catch you on the flip side. See ya.